Okay, here we go. I can't think of any really clever intros right now, so I'm just gonna start this. Hey everybody, this is Blade Mouth Master Alistair 9. Another installment of Let's Play The Lord of the Rings Aragorn's Quest has just arrived and Strider is really excited for this. Um, I'm probably going to call him Strider for the rest of this because I personally like that name better. It sounds very mysterious. In the last episode, if you can't tell, we made it to Rivendell. And in this episode, we will be side-questing. Possibly. I'm just gonna see... I think that we're gonna be side-questing because I really don't remember the side-quests and there are a lot in this level. I won't be side-questing as much in the other ones. I just remember there are a whole lot of side-quests in this. So I just want to get them out of the way. Um, that's a forge. Right. I don't think I was supposed to go that way. Um, let's... Just set an objective to this. Um, actually, I don't think you can set an objective. You just have to talk to people. Um, that, whoa! Shiny, shiny, shiny. I found a shiny. We found our adopted father's journal. Even if Sauron is defeated and Aragorn made king, wow, all in all that Arwen hopes for comes true, she will still taste the bitterness of mortality. Okay, I was trying to be mysterious earlier, but that pretty much just spoiled it. So, I'm just going to talk about them for a while, and after I've just realized that we actually can't do the side quests Michael at this Vannin. point. Oh, what she said was Maigo Vannin, which is actually hello in Elvish, I nearly said Japanese! Right. Um... Anyway, I'll talk more about Elvish later. Um, what he meant was El Aragorn is actually descended from the race of kings. He is actually the next one in line for the throne, which is rather cool if you didn't know that that was going to happen. Um, well, who do we want to do, the elves or dwarves? Nah, let's do the dwarves, they're closer. Uh, yeah. Uh, first thing we have to do is go... Eh, I'll just show you. Um, anywho, um... Anyway, so, and er, also, Aragorn is king, Aragorn is in love with Arwen, that elf lady that we met earlier, she's in love with him, it's basically Romeo and Juliet because they can never be together beca because he's mortal, she's an elf. So, they're kind of screwed, even if he does get made king. Plus, Elrond kind of, he loves Aragorn, but he does not want him to marry his daughter. Um... Hello, awesome dwarf. Uh, not dwarf. <laughs> Elves. Uh, we haven't seen any dwarves, but we did hear a commotion near the pool to the north. I wish we had a compass in this game. It would be much easier. It was loud enough to be a party of dwarves. Um, elves are always joking that they can... That dwarves are really clumsy and loud. And elves have... You can tell from the pointy ears that they have really awesome hearing. Um, yeah, we're gonna go look for them. My hands are getting all sweaty. <laughs> We technically don't have a bow yet, so that rack is completely useless. So we're gonna go look for Gimli. Gimli is a new party in our... A new party in our member. No, a new member in our party. He is... He's a dwarf, obviously. Speaking of dwarves, that was a really awesome segue that I just did. At last, a friendly face. I am Gimli, son of Gloin. Gloin is a character from The Hobbit. He was one of the 13 companions throughout the journey. I don't remember what exactly happened to him. My kid and I have come to speak with Master Elrond, but instead of elves, we are welcomed by foul-smelling trolls. Crap, I hate this! We fought them off, but I fear they developed a taste for dwarves. Crap. Just then, a gang of huge, ugly trolls burst into the clearing. Bring your pretty face to my eyes! <laughs> Gimli is often known as the comic relief, because he's always making little wisecracks to or about elves, mainly. Namely about elves, sometimes about Aragorn, but he is generally known as a comic relief. That's the main reason that people remember him, actually. I'm going to try not to use that Muruvor yet, and I was just doing it, making it sound really awesome. I'm going to concentrate here because I'm nearly dead. Yeah, bring your pretty face to my sword? Screw that! 
Wait, I meant to say axe, not sword. Bring your pretty face to my axe, screw that. Bring it to my sword! Or stomach, or whatever. Hey, we got healed. Um, also, um, I'm a little more about Gimli. Gimli is played in the movies by John Rhys Davies, who also is the voice of Treebeard. Treebeard is a character later on. He is, like I said, voiced by John Rhys Davies. He's an ant. He's basically a big walking tree. Anyway, let's talk to Gimli again. I was beginning to doubt the hospitality of elves, but we got a warm welcome after all. If there is anything I can do to help you, you have my axe. That is a reference to later on where the character Gimli actually does say, and my axe, because there's a whole, you have my sword, and my bow, and my axe. I will not be outdone by an elf. He does actually say that last part, but that's what everyone's thinking. What does this do? Dude, I could have been freaking invulnerable during that. Hey, at least we get glowing lights. I love glowing lights. They're really cool. Anyway, we gotta head back to Rivendell, kind of. I'm going to edit this part out. See you guys then. Anyway, guys, I'm back. I just wanted to... Gates of Rivia Rivendell were closed to keep out approaching enemies, aka we're... The prissy elves are scared of a bunch of itty bitty spiders. Uh, yep, R uh, Rivendell gates open. Um, inside joke among fans of War of the Rings that elves are always described as being prissy because they've always got the hair that never gets messed up. So anyway, you're gonna want to head back to the gate and then turn left. Go out the gate, turn left. I always get a little bit, bit confused, but apparently it's the Let's Play Blessing instead of the curse, as most people tend to put it. It's the Let's Play Blessing that I can actually remember what I'm supposed to do in this level. Oh look, hello. Yes, Master Alron did send me. Thank you very much. We've no, seen no sign of the delegates from Mirkwood. I fear the worst. Crows were circling near the river to the south earlier. It cannot be a good sign. Okay, Mirkwood. That is a city. Well, not city. It's, well, yes, city, actually. It is from, basically, if you're looking at a map, it is very far west and very much north. It's in a big forest. Aren't all elven cities in the forest? But anyway, there's also a prince in the Hobbit. You get to learn more about the the people from Mirkwood because the dwarves actually do run into the Mirkwoodian people. And they meet Gandalf's so good. Okay, we're meeting Gandalf later, actually. Um, anyway, ooh, I didn't actually have to side quest, so I'll take it. Okay, I'll take it. Um, but anyway, Theron... Thranduil, I hope I said that right, um, he has a son, his name is Legolas. Legolas is actually played in the movies by Orlando Bloom. We'll be, me we'll be meeting him in not that long. Oh boy, we just gotta go find him. Oh boy. Meet you there. Anyway, I, I'm pretty sure there was a very easier, much easier way, very easier, wow, grammar. I think there was a much easier way to do it. But, if you didn't do that, you wouldn't find the SHINY! We found a tattered cloak among the reeds, but we can't find any ring rays, actually. They're actually invisible if you... If you don't have the clothes on them. But, anyway, meet Legolas! Apparently, you know, they're going. Uh, we've tra traveled far from Mirkwood and have been shadowed every step of the way. Krevi, the great crows of Dunland, have followed us over the misty mountains. They are spies of the enemy. They must not report back to their master. Our flock approaches now. We have an extra bow. Would you aid us? I'm probably going to shut up during this part because I'm going to be trying to concentrate. But I'm just going to say this now. Krevi, they're actually... The crows that they were talking about, those are Krevi. They are from right next to this really creepy tower called Isengard and they are actually semi-intelligent birds which is bad anyway we don't want to fight them but we have to so let's kick their butts we got a bow also what what he was saying uh, as Strider took the bow from Legolas a great flock of Krevi appeared blackening the sky with their wings time it none escape. here we go Okay, I'm gonna be quiet now. Show me a foe I can reach with my axe. I love how 
was shooting backwards for a second there. You just have to be sure that you just have to listen for the locked on sound and you'll be good. Apparently the elves suck and they're all gonna miss. Whoa, I cannot believe I actually made that. <laughs> it is good to see that your years living with men have not dealt dulled your skills with bow. Nice. I'll give you what aid I can while my companions travel on to Rivendell. So, we have now created the warriors through I- three, I mean the three walkers. Um, <laughs> minor marble reference. But anyway, the, these, this little trio right here, they're known as the three walkers due to a feat they managed to perform in the second book named the two towers. Um, we're just basically gonna follow them and make our way back to Rivendell. So I'm gonna cut to that and I'll meet you there. Okay, so now we are back in Rivendell and I, there's a little man over there, actually it's a hobbit, that wants to talk to us, but I'm going to save this for the next episode. So in the next episode, like I just said, we are probably going to be side questing and we're gonna talk to the little man over there. It's actually Bilbo. Spoilers! Anyway, this has been Blade Master Alistair. Please subscribe, like, or leave a comment, or preferably do all three. Wow. Aragorn was rather excited about that. Anyway, see you guys then.